Hello YouTube, this is Darkon633, back with another Transformers review. Today we're going to take a look at the Transformers Power of the Primes Dinobot Sludge. Now this is the fourth Dinobot released in the Transformers Power of the Primes toy line. And it's really nice that I'm finally able to get a hold of one of the sadly kind of underrated Dinobots we've seen. We've actually seen a lot of the other releases throughout the years. Most likely it was just Slag, as they originally called it, but it usually goes by Slug or something now. It's hard to tell because they keep changing his name. Grimlock and Swoop. But now we actually got Sludge, which is one of the ones they rarely use overall outside of Age of Extinction. So anyways, we're going to take a look at the presentation and contents first. As usual, we're going to take a look at the card. On the card, we have a picture of Sludge in his Dinobot form. Same thing with here, but this time it's his toy form. On the back, we have pretty much just the usual stuff we see with these toys. We got a bio, transfers in 20 steps, which is actually rather surprising for a deluxe scale transformer, and a promotion of the other Prime Masters. Out of the box, you get one card, which mine actually is Prima Sludge, so that's interesting. You actually get the hand foot gun piece, as usual, and one gun. Now, this is something, once again, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine, but it's understandable. For some reason, Hasbro still yet to release these Dinobots with both of their weapons. I still appreciate that Hasbro released all the Dinobots, but it is annoying that they do not have both their guns and their swords. So in terms of content, I actually give it about a four and a half stars, just because they once again excluded the other weapon. Now we move on to the features, which, once again for transport, means transformation and articulation. So in terms of articulation, his head can swivel 360, but that's about it. You're not going to get anything else since it is on a standard swivel. He has ball joints on the shoulders. He has ratchets in the actual elbows, which is pretty good actually. Swivels at the biceps, and his hands can kind of move in and out, but once again, that's due to transformation. He does have 360 waist articulation. Ball joints to the hips, swivels of the thighs. Just under 90 degrees for the knee joints because it is blocked by some of the parts there. And that's about it. You're not going to get any other points in this mode. So now, we're going to take a look at the usual gimmick that these toys have. And that's the Prime Master gimmick. It does peg on to a hole that's in his chest, which is rather loose on mine. We're going to take out this piece here. And quickly take a look at it with a Prime Master, which this time we're going to take a look at with the Autobot one. We have Wave Rider here. So we're just going to quickly take a look using the figure inside here. A little bit tricky to pull these out, but there we go. And from there we're able to attach the Prime Master core inside. I think it's the other way. No. This is the right way. It doesn't really fit very well in mine, but you pretty much get the idea. Now we're going to move on to the transformation. So we're going to take out the gun here. And similar to the other Dinobots, he has a very G1-esque transformation. From here, we're going to pull the Brontosaurus head, turn this around, pull up this panel, and push it down. So we got the head form there. We're going to move the arms out of the way since you do need to move the wings into position since they'll actually form the body. Be wary since these parts actually pop up very easily. It's not that they're fragile per se, but they do just pop up quite a bit. You're going to put away the hands. So we got that going for it. Turn the feet around on both sides. We're going to turn this entire waist joint here, and from there, we'll be able to pull the legs down. And from inside, we actually have this little mechanism, similar to what we've seen with the Wave 1 Dinobots, where this entire unit will turn, as you can see inside there. But we do need to move the legs so that we can actually make it easier to push away the joint inside, so it looks something like that. From there, we're going to move the tail out of the way. We're going to peg these together. Push this down. And once again, there is a lot of alignment issues here. If you don't do this properly, it's going to pop off all over the place, which is something I really am annoyed about these Dinobots for. 
So then sometimes they work good, sometimes they barely work, and it drives me nuts. But, as you can see there, we're going to peg these together. And it's starting to misalign again, so we're going to quickly just fiddle around with it. There isn't really a clear way to get this working. You do just need to move a lot of the pieces around, or else it's just not going to work for you. From there we can place this back together. I think that's about as far as I'll be able to go. Actually, no, it's starting to unpeg again. Really do not know what the cause of this problem is, but it becomes quite a nuisance when playing around with these Dinobots. I'm going to quickly plug this back down. It's very possible it has something to do with the lower waist part there. There we go, it's starting to line properly finally. And with that, we have Sludge in his Brontosaurus mode. Now we have Sludge in his Brontosaurus mode. Now unfortunately, once again, it is on the small side since Sludge really should be a lot larger than this, possibly a Voyager scale at least since he is supposed to be a Brontosaurus. But in order to make sure they release this as a component where it's limb, unfortunately it does need to be on the smaller scale. You can take a Prime Master or a Headmaster and attach it here if you wish to. So I meant to say Titan Master, for some reason I actually forgot the name of that for a second. And you can put them in sitting position so that they actually sit on top of something like that. It's a little bit on the goofy side, but at least it is something you can do if you wish to. In terms of articulation, he does have the same joints as he did with the arms. He does have a single joint here. These bottom legs don't do anything, and you can use the same ratchets and swivel if you wish to. But other than that, that's about it for Dynamo. It doesn't do a whole lot of anything else. You can take the gun and place it underneath a little area underneath his neck, so you got him armed up like this, even though it looks really goofy. And I forgot to mention he does have a joint in the mouth, but that's as far as you're going to go. You're not going to go any farther than that. So that pretty much covers his Brontosaurus mode. So overall, this is still a very nice figure, and because of that, I actually give this a 5 out of 5 just because it does what it needs to do, even though it is missing the weapons, and I can't really dodge down a point for that just because of the missing weapon, just because it really does look nice in both modes, and it's really nice to finally get a sludge. So in terms of overall value, I still give it a 5 out of 5 just because of what it really needs to do. It is unfortunate that it does not have the weapon to go along with it, but that's pretty much a guarantee now at this point for the final of the Dinobots, and maybe some other company, maybe like Shapeways or another company for the customs, to actually release all the weapons. And now we're going to move on to some comparisons. First, we're going to take a look at him next to the G1 Sludge in robot mode. As looking them side by side, they're definitely very similar in a lot of areas. One thing to note I did forget to mention is that the wings on the G1 design and also on the show, they're definitely placed in a lot better locations compared to the new updated release since these seem a little bit too low to the body and it's just very distracting since it just doesn't look right overall in my opinion. Anyways, we'll now move on to their beast modes. And here we have both sludges side by side in their brontosaurus modes. Now, this is where it's kind of funky just because it is a little bit smaller than the actual G1 design, but at the same time, it's just a little bit smaller than the original sludge in beast mode versus their robo modes, which is obviously a huge difference in scale. So I think it would've been nice if they actually made deluxes on this scale once again, but it's unfortunate that it is something we're kind of have to get used to at this point. In conclusion, I'm still quite glad that Hasbro was able to make all five of the main Dinobots, and it's really nice that we finally got a set that is in one particular scale. Obviously, they are not quite the right scale compared to their original designs, but it's nice to actually just have them in all in one format without actually releasing them in various different lines outside of the Age of Extinction releases once again. So I highly recommend picking this up if you're a fan of the Dinobots. Anyways, please come rate and subscribe and check out Hero Club and Hirotaku. 
Also check out your Twitter and Instagram under darkon633. And don't forget to check down the other channels down below. Please check the little bell at the bottom of the screen in order to make content go up as soon as possible. And back with more Transformers reviews. For now, I'll be seeing you later, YouTube. Bye.